What is up artists? If you're seeing my channel today for the first time, my name is Samantha Lynch and today I will be telling you how to score a five on your AP portfolio. Let's get started. And I'll actually be doing a video on my um, APR experience and going more into depth. Um, so keep um, a watch out for that. But this is one of my favorite pieces from my portfolio and if you go to the other video, I'll be talking more about it. Everyone who took the AP art test, are you ready? In my class, passed. I know, awesome. Shout out to a Roosevelt AP art teacher, whoa! I don't know if she wants me to say her name, but yeah, she was awesome. But okay. It's time for us to go into the reason you're here. So I'm going to give you five different things you need to know to get a five on your portfolio. Number one, give the college board what they are looking for. You can be the greatest artist in the world, but taking this test, you have to understand that you are being evaluated on certain rules and regulations that you must uphold to meet their standards. And so let's talk a little bit about what those standards are. Well, the College Board is looking for portfolios that demonstrate strong evidence of practice, experimentation, revision, and a strong synthesis of materials, processes, and ideas. Um, and this is shown in your written, your written explanation of your artwork. So let's break down each of these criteria a little bit more. Practice basically just shows the college board that you planned for the, the final art piece that you're putting in your portfolio. This can be anything from journaling, to just showing anything in your sketchbook that you did to prepare, like testing colors, um, testing the technique that you're going to use to do the artwork, um, showing them collages that you may have done of research. You could even like screenshot, do a screenshot or take a picture of um, a collage that you did and just put that in your portfolio as well. Experimentation is really simple. All it is is that you tried and you tried and you tried and you tried again and it may have turned out right or it may have turned out wrong and it, it's just you playing around with different art forms. Say that you're a painter. You paint. Painting is your life. But now you wanted to try using charcoal and one scenario you know that goes really well and you made a bomb charcoal piece but maybe your charcoal piece didn't turn out so well and that's okay the college board likes to see that you tried even if you didn't if it didn't necessarily come out the way that you wanted it to and experimentation actually ties into the next part of the criteria very very nicely so revision Say you experimented on something, going back to that charcoal, you didn't really like it, you didn't really like how the piece looked, but now you take some steps, you do some research and figure out how other artists do um, their charcoal work the same way that you did, and now you go back to that piece and you fix, you fix some things to make it look better. Now you've done both experimentation and revision, and chances are you did some practice too to prepare for that revision. So these criteria tie into each other very nicely if you plan it the right way. Now, moving on to the next portion. Having a strong uh, synthesis of materials, processes, and ideas, um, and having a strong sustained investigation. So I want to just put emphasis on having a strong sustained investigation. Uh, a sustained investigation, if you've never heard of this word before, is basically a combination of art and research, which happen to be my two, one of my two favorite things. Um, so you ask a question and you try to answer that question through your art. So just a random example of a question that I just thought of is just maybe how does fashion 
affect the economy? Now, that's your question and that's your sustained investigation. And so now you're gonna go about trying to depict in your artwork in whatever art form that you're using, how does fashion affect the economy? And in your art pieces, you're going to be explaining that through a visual medium. Let's say the key to making a good sustained investigation is just making it something that isn't too overly done, something that's original, but not too hard for you personally to depict. So I would suggest um, going into something that you're passionate about because you are going to be working on this project for uh, or this portfolio for about nine months. You're going to be writing a, um, a written explanation for your artwork explaining how you use different materials, how you use different art processes slash techniques, and how your ideas or your sustained investigation ties into those materials that you use, ties into that, those techniques that you use. And there are a ton, a ton of resources to, to look at various examples of other students work and, and to um, figure out what the College Board is looking for. So down in the description below, I just placed a few links, um, example portfolios of fives and other videos that help you understand uh, what the College Board is looking for. Um, but I would say, um, especially as an AP student, you want to be utilizing the College Board's free um, portfolio exercises and tip videos because those are coming directly from the source. They're telling you exactly what they want and giving you um, reminders of things you need to be doing for your portfolio and written explanation. That can be very, very helpful. Number two. Uh, the second thing that you need to know to get a five on your portfolio is to use your strongest art techniques. This is your chance to show off your skills, to show them that you are talented. But what area are you talented the most in? I know for me personally, I am a hands, like I use my hands. So I, for 2D, I had to do traditional art. I'm not at the digital, I, I don't know, I, I don't know anything about digital art yet. So it would be really hard for me to be submitting digital art because I would be learning everything on the spot and then just hoping that everything came out well in time. And um, I don't think that would work out very well. <laughs> so if you're a 2D art student, you wanna think about whether you're better at digital art or traditional art and within those two, what techniques are you most familiar with um, that you can rely on to do art and meet the deadlines that you have to meet? Um, and if you're a 3D art student, you want to be thinking about whether you're going to be choosing metalworking, sculpting, models, or ceramics. Again, whichever one you feel the strongest in, AP art is not a time for your teacher to be teaching you how to do art. I'm sorry, that's just not the way it works. Your teacher can give you tips and critiques that are going to help you, but if you're experimenting on every single thing in your portfolio, you're going to you might be having a really hard time meeting the deadlines for your grades. Um and it, it depends on, you know, how much grace your teacher gives you, but uh, I would say to choose two to four pieces that you're going to uh, experiment on. In total there are 15 pieces in your portfolio so that gives you some space to explore but then you're not going to be overwhelmed in um, the deadlines in getting artwork in for your grades. Number three and do not please do not get mad at me for saying time management. It's a thing okay. <laughs> And this just goes for any class you're taking, any course you're doing, anything in life really is managing your time. And again, you can be the greatest artist in the world. If you don't meet your deadlines, if you do not give people what they want when they need it, if you're not able to give the college board 
all of your awesome pieces of final artwork in time on your portfolio, you, your teacher will know that you're an awesome artist, you know that you're an awesome artist, but the college board will only see what's in your portfolio and if half or more than a half of your pieces aren't finished, your grade or I mean your score is going to reflect that. So here is a rough breakdown of your timeline. You are making 15 to 20 pieces of artwork. Actually, no, you're making 20 pieces. I'm sorry, that is the minimum. You need 20 pieces because 15 are for your sustain investigation. And then there's another five that you have to do that are just evaluating like your, your basic art skills. And yes, so that's another thing. See the college board resources for that, but yeah. 20 pieces of artwork in eight to nine months one work of art every two weeks more or less you know depending on your teacher and their requirements and you have to make sure again that at least two-thirds of your artwork are finished make sure you keep a good eye on that clock because time goes by fast that brings us to number four do research on artists who focus on your particular inquiry or art techniques. As artists, we have to be humble. I know that you're awesome and you're so original and unique, but so are other artists and we want to learn from the pros to save a lot of time and energy. If you're doing a sustained investigation on how businesses recycle more, look at how other artists depicted this. If you're doing a sustained investigation on how technology affects mental health, look at artists who depicted this. If you want to learn how to make colorful and whimsical landscapes, study art and artists who have already done so. If you want to make super detailed black and white still life with charcoal, look at how other artists did it. Basically, Maximize your reference material to save yourself time in your art developmental process. And finally, number five. This is very important, so listen closely. Listen! When your teachers and your peers give you critiques on your work, I cannot tell you how many art pieces I changed and modified and they looked so much better thanks to my teacher and my classmates. As an artist and you know, we, we just, we just are so independent sometimes and we're like, we have our vision and our vision is there and we're like, ah, I don't wanna change it. I don't wanna change it. I wanna there is nothing wrong with starting over again or revising, that's how you revise. A great way, critiquing. They tell you exactly what you need to revise. So even if your class doesn't do like um, time set aside for critiques, I would just, you know, walk over to your friend, your buddy, your pal, or you know, whoever in your class and be like, hey, anything, you, like what do you think? What do you think? Um, what can I do to make this look better? Or just ask your teacher, hey, Hey, you know, come here, come here, come here. Um, I I'm stuck. Uh, I don't know how to do this art technique that I'm trying to do. Reach out for help and you'll save yourself a lot of time and learn from everyone who's in your class. Those are my five tips um, for you to get a five on your AP portfolio. Giving the college board what they're looking for, using your strongest art technique to your advantage, managing your time, using references for your SI in art development, and listening to critiques from your teacher and your peers. AP Art, with all of its challenges and frustrations, was an amazing experience for me. And I hope that you all get a five and that it's an amazing experience for you too. So if you liked this video and it was helpful for you, make sure that you like, uh, subscribe, and leave a comment down below to let me know what art technique you're going to be using to get a 5 on your AP portfolio. And remember artists, dream big, live bold, and keep on creating.
Bye. What is up, artists? If you're seeing my my channel, laugh. Never mind. Bye.